It's time now for our focus report. And this Friday, we're talking about recycling. When it comes to waste management and environmental awareness, Sweden is the world's heavyweight champion. The country recycles nearly all its waste and in the process also generates electricity and heating. Well, France 2's Claire Colnet has this report, voiced by Nicholas Rushworth. Sweden has turned its waste into gold. We're doing good business, and at the same time we feel good about it because we're helping protect the environment. Out of the 4.4 million tons of Swedish waste each year, just 1% is dumped in landfill. How do the Swedes manage to do that? How come they are so far ahead of other European countries in the recycling business? This shopping centre, 100 kilometres from Stockholm, looks no different to any other crockery and glassware, furniture, electrical goods are for sale. But all the items are in fact being recycled in a unique project. These computers, for example, are being repaired one by one for resale. And here you go, it's working again. Okay, and here comes a DVD player, and it also has a VHS tape player and recorder. And is it working? OK, yeah, it works. I'm moving house, so there are many things that I won't be bringing along with me. That's how this treasure here turned up. Yes, and someone else can use them, and that's a good thing. A whole culture of recycling has sprung up in Sweden. This Frenchman, Jan, has been living in the country for 12 years and has adapted. He pays special care to sort all his kitchen waste. Take this banana peel, for instance. It goes here, the special bag for organic waste. The city of Stockholm supplies rubbish bags free of charge. The main rule is to separate the waste properly. This here is the bag for all the plastic waste. And I put the rest in here. Paper, magazines, glass and metal bottles. Consumers make a trip to a recycling center on average twice a week. There's one nearby in every district, each with seven recycling bins. What we do for the environment just becomes part of the routine, and that is a source of satisfaction. Each person has their own role to play in environmental protection. Swedish people bring in around 480 kilograms of waste per person per year. Half of it, metal, plastic, glass, goes directly for recycling. The other half also gets a second life. Anything that cannot be recycled is transported to power generation plants. From household rubbish to used packaging in all, 750,000 tonnes of waste is treated each year. Huge pincers drop waste into incinerators that turn it into energy. We have electricity producing turbines. And in the process, we also generate heat, which is made available to Stockholm residents. 100,000 people get heating that way, and 200,000 people benefit from the electricity we generate. The power generation causes hardly any pollution. Authorities say CO2 emissions are two times lower than the limits allow. The system works so well that to keep incinerators working flat out, Sweden treats waste from other countries. 10% of the waste our company treats here is, in general, imported. Where do they come from? Mostly from the United Kingdom. Sweden imported 1.4 million tons of waste in 2016. Waste exporting countries paid 36 euros per tonne, bringing in more than 50 million euros. We see waste as a commodity, a product one can sell or buy, just like other forms of energy. Waste is an efficient source of energy and it's also a very good way to reduce our environmental impact. Sweden wants to go further. It hopes to reuse 100% of its waste within three years and have no landfill sites at all. Well, for more on this, I'm joined in the studio by our guest, Flor Bellingen, is director of Zero Waste France. Hello, thank you very much Hi. for being with us. How long has it taken Sweden to get to this stage first? Well, it's a pretty long story. Uh, I think it started in the 70s uh, with the first uh, ambitious uh, recycling programs. But in, in some other countries, um, progress is, is quicker. For example, in Italy, we have some regions in, who are improving very fast. Like in two, three years, they can like reverse their statistics, which is 
pretty interesting for us. That's inspiring, absolutely. Mm. Now, it's not all rosy, or perhaps I should say green, uh, for Sweden. Mm. For instance, your organisation rejects the idea that uh, burning waste counts as recycling. Why? Yes. Uh, well, it's pretty simple. Uh, burning waste um, is just destroying material uh, versus recycling. Um, its goal is to uh, reuse material and re reuse resources. So uh, we cannot consider burning waste as a, a form of circular economy, which is um, the idea that you, you should be in a cycle. But isn't uh, it creating energy? Yeah, well, recovering heat um, is the least you could do. Uh, when you decide to burn waste. Uh, and also the problem with Sweden, um, as mentioned in the video report, is that they need to import waste from other countries so that the, the, the incineration plants are not uh, empty. Uh, it means that waste travels thousands of kilometers uh, to be burned in another country, which is not exactly what environmental standards today uh, should uh, lead to. So this is a way perhaps of, of not recycling as much as they could? Yeah, well, uh, in Sweden, um, the, the recycling has not really improved in the last 10 years. Uh, and maybe incineration is the one reason for that. Um, whereas in Italy, as I, I was saying, um, we have seen great progress and some regions in Italy are um, really... Um, have performances that are really higher than Sweden, like 70 or 80 percent of recycling today. Uh, so it shows that it's absolutely possible. And I think that if uh, Sweden was not so much involved in, in incineration, they could reach easily those standards. And what about here in France? What's the situation here? Well, in France, we are um, not as advanced um, in general. I mean, uh, Regarding recycling, we are f about 40 percent, um, but we are also improving, and we we will be improving in the the next few years, also thanks to um, composting, because this is something that really makes a difference, uh, because this is 30 percent of our um, garbage, and if we take it out and we um, compost it, for example, um, of course, it reduces the amount of waste that needs to be incinerated or landfilled. But that demands a, a general effort, but also an individual effort. How hard is it to change mm. mentalities on that kind of theme? Well, um, I think that, um, ex especially for compost, uh, it's not so difficult because uh, it seems natural. Uh, it's a natural cycle composting and and this is something that people really understand in small city flats it's not the easiest thing to organize is it of course but you have many different solutions uh, you have home composting of course uh, and it's easier of course if you have a garden uh, but it could also be uh, done in in apartments but you also have a uh, community composting and you also have separate collection of organics and and this can happen in a big city such as Paris and you so you talk about collective organization is there a political will to improve I think so. Uh, it's slowly uh, starting. Um, for example, in Paris, uh, the, the municipality decided to, um, to start as a separate collection of organics. Uh, so it's for, for the moment, it's only in a, in a part of the city, but it's going to, uh, to improve and to, um, to be extended to the whole city. And looking more widely, there's clearly a good and positive financial impact uh, in, in going green. Why, on an issue like this, um, is it so hard to get nations on board? Well, um, I think because, uh, of course, it's a, it's a lot of uh, work and the transition is not easy. Uh, so that's, um, that makes it a bit difficult for, especially for local politicians uh, who have to handle uh, a lot of different um, aspects of uh, environmental issues. Uh, but in the long term, uh, they know that uh, it's it's a, it's a good thing for also for the budget of the municipalities. And since the, they are currently under a great financial stress, I think uh, it will be a, um, a stronger motivation in the next few years. So how does your organization Zero Waste France help this? Well, uh, we, we advocate for zero waste strategies at the local level and we try to help um, local politicians through uh, sharing examples of what is actually working already in some other countries or some other regions.
And what's working here in France? Is there something that we can be proud of here? Yes, of course. <laughs> uh, for example, we have um, uh, great cases of uh, organic collections um, um, in cities such as Lorient. Uh, it's been going on for years and it works very well. And the compost uh, can be used in, um, in some uh, farming, organic farming, uh, which, is, uh, which is also uh, a, good, uh, a good thing for uh, other environmental issues, uh, not only for waste. Thank you very much for having spoken to us. Thank you.